Texas 95.7, the Armadillo, Craig Vaughn in the studio. It's Tuesday. Special guest in here is Lee Manuel and Casey Hooper from Good the WRCA. Good morning. How are morning. You? <laughs> they aren't that cheery off the air. You should hear them. <laughs> well, he has it like a daggum dungeon in here. I, he handed me a vial of blood to drink, and I was like, well, not so early in the morning. No, he's got it dark. It's cloudy outside, so therefore the I'm I'm very sleepy, so I might mumble worse than usual. <laughs> it is a little bit uh, overcast here in the Panhandle this awesome. morning, so it is. It's awesome. It's Temperatures nice. are great, though. Uh, uh, no rodeo last last weekend or the weekend before, right? Yeah, so two weekends without a rodeo, and then none this coming up, which Easter. Uh, one after that, and we'll get into that uh, when it's here, but. We like to take these downtimes in between rodeos and actually talk about what the WRCA's main function. I mean, we always talk rodeos, and everybody knows about the national championship downtown here. If you're from Amarillo, uh, uh, but there's a reason that you guys do that, and and it's really the foundation side of what WRCA does. So, absolutely. And when we don't have, uh, we're not saying that the foundation takes a second place. We're not saying that we don't have anything to talk to about the foundation. That's not it at all. But it takes a whole jar of goods to make us who we are. Mm -hmm. So let us dump out our buttons and separate them a little bit, and now we're on the foundation button. You know what I mean? That's right. We're going to now go to a different... So I just kind of want to put it out there. We On March 26th, the board met and announced the winners of this year's selection. And without going through them all... We represent uh, their new kids out of New Mexico, Kansas, Texas, uh, let's see, Colorado, and one out of the state of Washington. This kid was really cool. Uh, remote camp up there, and it's it's really neat. And when you say when you say uh, the selection, you're talking about scholarships. This is the scholarships. Side yes, sir. I'm sorry. I I was thinking that in my sure head. If anybody heard that, new. What are they selecting them for? <laughs> <laughs> Scholarship <laughs> base. <laughs> dungeon? <laughs> <laughs> now, see, there's there, there's this movie called Dexter. I just thought of that. <laughs> the Craigster. Oh. So, yeah, because there is the scholarship side, but there's also the side where you guys. Uh, yeah, the yeah, crisis side. The crisis side. Yeah. Which is, ties into the national, the national, the, the natural disaster fund. Right, right. Um, and but, so this is that time of year, though, that you guys, that the board chooses who. Yes, who, March 1st. How many, how many entrants did you have? So we ended up what? around probably with 42. Wow. Okay. And then after that, then there was 22 presented to the board. That's great. That's great. And f like I said, from all over the United States. Yeah. yeah. Which is an exciting for us whenever we can get an applicant from Idaho, Oregon, the yeah. state of Washington. But it also just means as much when we get Kansas, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, these kids are, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to me. It restores my faith in the direction that these parents are raising their kids. Um, there's days that I go, oh, my gosh, we're headed down the, <laughs> the closed off rabbit hole. But then we look at these applications and we look at the kids that are applying and we look at the applicants that the board selected and even the existing ones that we have currently. Mm -hmm. There's exactly, I think we said 30, crud, I just 30, went 38. 38. Yes, I'm sorry. Continuing. 38. You're right. So we have 20 new. And then on top of that, so there's a total of 38. Yes, because what you guys do is not just a one-time scholarship, right? Correct. So we do it a little differently. They have one have to prove up as a full-time student, so we don't count summer school, right? So fall and spring, 12 hours or more, and they have to maintain a 3.0. They have to have a 3.0 to be able to go through the process of being reviewed by the board. And then after that, in August, I'll call them, you know, and say, send me your proof of enrollment. They'll tell me where they're going. Give me your student ID. Check goes into there. They don't see any of it. I handle it. A lot of times it, uh, a scholarship will be a one-time deal, not with us. We send one each semester. So at the end of the fall, they'll call me again. Here's my proof of enrollment for spring. Right. Here's my transcript. Yeah. And we'll carry them for four years based it's on really that eligibility. Cool. Yeah. It's got to be so comforting to not only the, the kids but also the parents involved. And you get to be in a, you get to have a personal relationship, um, like the the kid that we're going to talk to, 
uh, that just received the James Marker Memorial Scholarship. It was here, Caden Kindle, mm -hmm. which we've heard his name a time yeah. or two. Yeah. He was a recipient of the James Marker. Had him for four years. He's tipping his hat and going on and finishing in May. And uh, we're replacing that scholarship now with Wiley Heath out of Cologne, South Dakota. Is that right? Cologne. We had to look it up Loam. and had to, the Google tell yeah. us how to enunciate it. <laughs> so we're going to talk this morning with the Bricker family. Uh, Amanda Bricker and her husband Ed and the family are funding of the James Marker, and there's a backstory there, and I just want her to tell it. Yeah, yep. a little bit. Uh, he was a competitor, a competitor of ours. He was on the ranch team, and great guy, great family. And so we'll. Where are the Brickers at? What? Uh, Sun City, Kansas, Sun over City. kind of by Pratt, and kind of by Alva. Kind of by Cherokee, Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you get into those small, small places, you got to start naming off more than one. Yes, you, you know? do. We got to find a, a focal point. You get into like the 200 miles southeast of. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, and they go to school um, at, at, I think it's Skyline Schools, the girls do, but it's, you know, it's a distance from where they live. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, cool. We'll get, uh, who are we calling in? Who are we? Amanda Bricker. Amanda. Amanda. Not, that would, not, Amanda. not Amanda. Don't call her Amanda. No, not just Amanda. It's Amanda. She is the Amanda. She is <laughs> the only Amanda I know. <laughs> and on the phone, just like that, because it's magic. It is magic. Amanda Bricker is on the phone with us. How are you, Amanda? I'm great. How are y'all? We're good. We're giggling. A little giggly this morning. <laughs> we are. That's actually a song. Amanda, magic, you know, I believe in magic. And I maybe I should take over. See, there you go. There she's... There, off the air, we told you about the squirrel thing, right, Amanda? <laughs> yes. Well, there's one running around here right now. <laughs> A little bit, um, Craig, I I won't get too sentimental, or this isn't designed for that, basically, but a little backstory in 2011, and I'll let Amanda tell the story, but they came to us about starting a scholarship basically for a young man that they lost in their family by the name of James Marker. And then, and, and I'll, like I said, I'll let her tell the story, but the first recipient of that scholarship was Coley Ship out of Alpine. And the only restriction Ed and Amanda and the Bricker family had was that it went to a kid that, be it a girl or a boy, that came from true ranching roots, working ranch cowboy, and that they they could showcase and best represent us. And they wanted, there's no, uh, good thing about this family is they don't, um, they see the good in everybody. So they didn't specify or give specifics. They said, you guys make the choice, and uh, I always let them know which one. So Coley Ship was the first one. He graduated, finished that out of four years, started in 11, graduated in 14. Then off we go, get on the phone with Ed, and I tell him, well, what do you think? He goes, make the choice, sis. I said, okay. Bryce Howe. Bryce Howe out of New Mexico will sound familiar. Uh, he was another kid. He started in August 2014. He finished up, told Ed what had happened. He said, okay, who we got next? And then it came out of Cody Richardson, right here out of the panhandle. And he said, okay, sounds good to us. And um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure these kids communicated back with you, Amanda, after they received it. After they received the scholarship, they received a little um, tidbit about James and the story. And I had parents break down with me when I went over the story with them. With them and, I, and I told them the passion we had behind that scholarship and the meaning we had behind it. And they said, well, my son will do what they need to do, or my daughter. So, Amanda, I'm going to let you kind of take over now um, a little bit. Hi, more. Casey. Thank you so much. Um, we were very familiar as a family with WRCA because we've been attending the rodeos for quite some time. But, honestly, the crisis fund, the WRCF part of it, was a mystery to us until uh, this young man who was like an adopted son to us and our family um, died in an accident, and what was miraculous is even though we were in our own world of pain while that was going on, the very next morning, 
Casey and Mandy called us and offered us assistance through the crisis fund to help us in any way we needed uh, with funeral expenses for James. And Ed and I were so very touched by that. We honestly had no idea it really existed or what it did. And that was our introduction to the crisis fund. And even though we were hurting and we were in pain from our loss, it, it set off a desire in us to give back to our community. It opened our eyes to the need that is out there within our community. Our community is not good about having savings account or, or life insurance, and they aren't prepared for disaster when it strikes. So through the crisis fund, we're able to take care of our own within our own community. We don't have to wait for government assistance, which quite frankly may never come. And we step up and we fill that void for our community. That's exactly right. And I think that it it's interesting because we actually watched James grow up as being part of the team. So when this happened, a lot of you that are in farming or ranching and agriculture kind of get the idea that even though you're not blood related, when something affects your family of lifestyle, it affects everybody. That was a void on the ranch card that was going to stay with us for a long time. So even though this happened in 2011, I find it an honor to be able to still talk about James Marker. And I think it helps the Bricker family know that his legacy and the, will still stay with us and it'll still be discussed. And that's the man that he was. And that I think that's how Ed and Amanda wanted him to be remembered as. He wanted to be a cowboy. He wanted to be at 15 years old when Ed took him under his wing and said, come on, buddy. He wanted to do this, and he was true and true till the day that he passed. And so I Yes, just, and, and that was the great thing about the crisis fund as well as James himself is he was looking for a way to better himself. He was looking for a hand up, not a hand out. And I know that's a phrase that gets thrown a lot, you know, around a lot with our organization, but we mean it. And that's exactly what we did in establishing the scholarship for James in his name. Not only was it therapeutic for us, the family to leave that legacy for him uh, in his name, but also it, it promoted good within our own community that we are still reaching out and helping those that need assistance that want a better life and are willing to work for it. That's right, and I and it goes with anything that we do, Amanda. And uh, I think Lehman had some to say real quick. He no, you're good. No, I just I'm just sitting here amazed at. You know, this lifestyle that, that we're all a part of is so based on the good people that that are, you know, willing to do what you guys have done, Amanda. And we know you know what you have contributed, not only to James's life, but to all these kids that you've helped. You know, but we just don't ever want to take that for granted. And having this platform to tell this story so that everybody else around the country can hear, uh, it's it's just uh, cool. It's amazing, actually, is what it is. Well, it's it's something that you want to get put on Dateline, but then we're also too proud to talk about it in front of people out of our comfort zone. I think that's what sets us apart, is we all get it. And the people listening to Craig's station, they get it, too. And there's a reason why people tune in. It's because we're real. You know, I mean, yes, I'm... We probably Craig probably gets a bunch of hate mail because things I say, <laughs> but but on the but on the flip, but on the flip side of that, the kids that received James Marker Memorial Scholarship are the kids that would work side by side with Ed and Manda. Those are the kids. It doesn't matter if it's the James Marker or Karen L. Smith or the Cargill Name Scholarship. It doesn't matter. These kids. You could take them anywhere, and they're adaptable. That's Ranch Ray's kids for you. And if you tell them to eat the paint off the wall, they'll do it till you tell them to stop. <laughs> they have work ethic, and they have the desire. But when you add somebody like James, the honor beside that, it uh, strikes a chord, and it, it becomes real. His legacy will live on. His legacy is living on. And when I watch... Their girls, the Bricker girls, grow mm, up. Right. They get it. Yes, they do. So let me just fluff your and Ed's feathers a little bit, Amanda. You guys have done a fine job. And everyone that those girls are associated with, they're role models for their community and for the kids that they are. And they're going to be fine. But uh, James, 
James Marker has a good, had a good hold in him. And I know Gracie remembers a lot of that and Sophie too. And so you're doing a fine job. All you guys, parents raising ranch kids are doing a fine job. Thank you. You Thank make you my so job much. easier. <laughs> yes. And that, I remember well when you called me to extend, you know, the, the crisis fund to our family for James. And it hit me that I'm sure this speaks for most of the crisis fund recipients. They're humble, hardworking people, and they're, they're not asking for anything. You have to go find them most of the time. Um, it, and these are the last people to ever ask for assistance and probably the people who need it the most. And they're within our community, and we're obligated to take care of them. Well, heck yeah. Just like a kid growing up, you're obligated to take care of your mother. No, right? <laughs> no matter how far, it's now our obligation to t- you take care of each other. And uh, Right. And it's, we, we may not all be family by blood, but we are family by association. And I look forward to seeing the same faces year after year, rodeo after rodeo, because they're family. Yes. Their family and I, I know, Craig, this is kind of an interesting tidbit. Talk about family. Talk about honoriness. We're coming up on uh, three years that her husband broke his neck at Claremore. And Ed's going to kill me for mentioning this. <laughs> but um, we won't. <laughs> but no, it's too late now. It's on the airwebs. <laughs> but <clears throat> those, everyone stepped in, you know. And the only one that remained calm was Manda. She was a just as calm as can be she said god's got this he's still alive we got this but those girls stepped up and and everybody in the community and i always just think about that three years ago holy smokes but we're coming up on claremore yes and that's when we'll see and start it all off and what manda said about seeing families and seeing people again this is kind of like old home week now and everybody will get back in the jive We'll all say, oh, gosh, the kids have grown up. My goodness. You know what? It's pretty cool. It is. We are literally raising the, the next generation with these kids that are on these cards and watching them grow up and become adults that we're proud to be part of our family. And just to get to see that year after year and those connections we have with the other WRCA families is really special. You know, WRCA, uh, the foundation, everything that we're about, it, it all goes back to the opportunities we have to help other people. And sometimes, you know, you come to work every day or, you, you know, you go do what you do. <clears throat> you don't necessarily wake up thinking about that. But the hundreds of kids that this organization has helped through the scholarship program, yes. each of them is unique. Each of them is now contributing in their own way. And to have people like Manda and Ed, uh, we just want you guys to know, and I, and I know you do, but we want you to know that your impact on young people's lives is so far reaching. You know, it's just, it's got to be heartwarming. It's, it's got to be a special thing. And we don't ever want you to forget that the, the lives you've touched, it's real and you're helping kids continue their education and, and, you know, if it was just honoring James Marker, that would be enough. Yes. That would be enough. But it goes so much further than that, Casey. It does go further than that. And then we'll probably end it with, because someone might have had to pull over and go, holy smokes, I had no idea. And we want that to, we want that to be an impact on somebody. Uh, we're not just a rodeo. There's a reason why we do the championship. You know, there is a reason behind it. And. This is the reason Absolutely. behind it. Absolutely. And it's the Bricker family that makes that reason possible. It's Pokey the Clown when he did the Karen L. Smith for his wife. That makes it possible. Uh, best way to remember somebody is to get them remembered in something that mattered. And so James will live on. We're going to have a good day. I'm sure there's probably good lunch coming for Ed when he gets home. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm sure Manda's got her Me. cookies made. Now, yeah, beef, it's what's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There you go, kid. There you go, kid. Well, thank you for taking time out. Craig, did you have something? You're kind of quiet. I put you in the molly no, grubs I, over I there. I enjoy listening to the to the stories. I mean, it's 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 always really cool, you know, and, and everything. Everything you said, man, it was really neat, you know, especially, you know, uh, I think we'd go back far enough, you'd find a time where this was a more common thing, 
you know, not to wait on government assistance and, and all that. And you just, you know, you got with your friends and your neighbors and your loved ones and you, and you, got did, through you it. did something about things, you know, without. And it's just it's too bad we don't have more of what y'all do just integrated into society across the, the entire United States. So. Well, you'll be waiting for a minute, but that minute, let us. You know, Amanda said it's more than a hand up than a hand out. It's something we use, but it's so true, and it has so many moving parts to it. But everyone's crisis is so different. You know, you have a day worker that loses a thumb. Well, to somebody else, that well, might be a minor. Well, that isn't a really big setback. It is when you got four little ones at home, mm -hmm. a wife that's a substitute teacher, and your income is coming by day-to-day -day, day wages, and now you're out mm -hmm. to the guy that has to go 80 miles for dialysis. So everyone's crisis is different, and you're seen as, an in, you're, you're seen as your own entity when you apply. Mm -hmm. We don't even look at it like the government standard because everyone's crisis yeah. is real. So that, and that's a great takeaway. And WRCA is not about rodeos. It's not. It's about an organization of family uh, who we take care of each other. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, have a good day. Now that we'll probably get government hate mail, <laughs> but praise Jesus. <laughs> Got to find it first, sister. <laughs> and uh, you tell Ed I didn't mean to put him on the chopping block there, but he can. We can get dirt in the skirt when we get to Claremore. He'll let me have it there. <laughs> He'll, he'll never know. <laughs> Amanda, thank you guys. Thank you for taking time out. Okay. Anytime. Anything I can ever do for y'all, just let me know. Thanks, Take care, Amanda. Amanda. Craig, thank you so much for your time. You bet. Thank you. Yeah, very, very, uh, a very, very neat, very neat family, very neat uh, way of life. Uh, like I said, uh, I just think uh, it's too bad that, that more, more, more of that thought process isn't happening all over the place. I mean, just I mean, you could, for many reasons, you know what I mean? I mean, whether it's whether you want to get into the government, your taxes thing, or you just want to because we'd all be better humans. You know, <laughs> we were talking about that earlier and I promised Lehman I wouldn't go off. So I'm not going to go off. <laughs> Walk away, Casey. But, I'm gonna walk, walk away, away on the deck. <laughs> walk away. But if, if that story did hit you, if you're if you're if you're listening right now, you're going, well, you know, how do I find out more? Because that's only she's that's just one. That's that's, that's one a example. Lot of those stories. That's one example of you know, we've we've brought on scholarship recipients. Mm -hmm. If you've been following us, which I hope you have, and if you haven't, you can go and listen to these pre recorded takes that we had from last year. You can go on our website and pull those up. And uh, if you, we talked about crisis, we've talked to recipients, and I, I kind of wanted to flip the coin a little bit and talk about a family or an individual who has started and who gives. So now you have that side. So maybe you've put all the pieces together and realized that we can't do it without the donor's help. With that being said, you can donate online mm -hmm. through our website at the three W's, W-R-C-A dot O-R-G, through our mobile app, and through Giveafly. But you could all tie that in together through our webpage. Mm -hmm. Or you can actually do Casey style and call the office, yeah. and I will be more than happy to talk to you. Yep. Yeah, if you want just information, just yes. want to find out more, you know, is that an isolated case or is there, you know, you know, you know, is there, was there really somebody that lost a thumb? Or you know, if you want to yes. find out more, Casey will give you details. She might not give you names. No, uh, I won't give you names, and I, I can give you a little bit of scenarios yeah. where your dollar is at work. Yep. And I think that is a proven fact. And what we want to basically pump to people is your dollar mm -hmm. is getting used. Yep. Yep. It, it gets used. And and they've they've got a store even. And this is my big thing over the last couple of years. I like to find, like, I have birthdays or Christmas is coming up. I like to try to find gifts where the money goes back somewhere. People can be happy on both ends. I, the person who got the gifts, oh, I really like this hat. Thanks for the hat. You know, and the WRCA got the money for the hat. Oh, thank you for the purchase of the hat. It goes towards the scholarship mm -hmm. or whatever. So well, they do have a store. That, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a store. There's a, uh, you, I, right here, I love this. There's a whole 
uh, the ranch hand blend coffee. Oh, yeah. Dollar per bag goes back to WRC. If you're yeah, going to buy coffee Union. anyway. Bison Union. Yep. Go to them and get that coffee, and it will, uh, good morning. It puts an exclamation point. It will change your life. <laughs> it does make you, know, you want to wrestle bears and, yeah. like, do all sorts of stuff. <laughs> How many people are listening that are going to buy coffee anyway, at wherever they buy coffee from? You know, well, go get it from here, and you know. Well, and that company, well, I mean, we just ought to say that company is kind of something that you can grab a hold of. I mean, you're an American. Mm-hmm. that the, They're... Uh, they're a military, you know, based organization. The ownership, veterans, yeah. they're a veteran based company, and um, they they hire, you know, and they use products within the borders of this country, and they support our country, and they support the working ranch cowboy through that coffee. You can buy the K cups, you can buy whole bean, you can buy the ground. I don't know why you, you know, want to buy decaf, but they have decaf. They do have that <laughs> decaf for those folks, but uh, just another way you can help support. The foundation. When I first talked to Bert Kuntz, the owner of Bison Union, one of the owners, he said, you don't have to pitch me. You guys are true blue American, working ranch cowboy, and um, I want to be part of that. And that's what happened there. Mm -hmm. That's good. And so if you want to learn something about that, bisonunion.com. If you want to learn how, I would rather have someone call you know, it's hard when you're trying to explain how much that donation meant to somebody over the phone because I want to look at you hard. I want to look at you and be like, you seriously don't understand how much you've changed someone's life. Mm-hmm. Now, you will have to talk to me for longer than 10 minutes. I'm sorry I'm just <laughs> long-winded. It's just how it is. But I, uh, your dollar gets put to use. All the people that put on the sanctioned rodeos, they actually witness things happening. And I'm looking forward to Claremore, Oklahoma coming up. Yeah. yeah. We talked about, you know, not all rodeos, but but the rodeos are a great way to get the name out for WRCA. And, and, uh, and get to see let, work in Ranch Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. Compete. Yep. Yeah. For if you just want to go all the way to to the Cowboys who get entered and kind of re- get to, to learn what the foundation does and, and everything and, and the people that are involved with it. So, yeah, the next one coming up is Claremore. April 26th and 27th. Claremore's up there by Tulsa. And the grass is green and belly oh, high. Kid me, I was looking at where they are in Sun City, where 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 Amanda was. Yes, uh, looks guys, just like this. Well, well, they got the green grass right in the middle of the city. They've got that little river that kind of runs mm-hmm. through, and you can, I mean, from Google Maps, you can just trace it because it's this big green stripe that kind of runs <laughs> through there, and it's beautiful. And then if you zoom out, you're like, oh, that's actually the rest of it is more like <laughs> it's a little more dry. You it doesn't bet. look quite so flat, but it looks you a little bet. more dry. So. Yeah. And then, no, we don't come in up there. Off the air, I was like, do we come up there? And I, when I Google mapped it, I'm like, oh, gosh, no. We need a 500,000-watt transmitter to reach up there. <laughs> they could get you through the, you through the know, interwebs yeah, exactly. if, they, if they wanted to. But yeah, Claremore, Oklahoma, that's in two weeks, right, Casey? Is yes. it from now? Yep. And if, and if you guys want to follow our schedule, uh, we've been hitting WRCA.org. You know, that's where you can go to get everything. Download our mobile app. That's just a way to stay connected with us. Everything about our sanctioned rodeo schedule, our results will be posted out there. Everything about the foundation, uh, just download that mobile app. You can stay hooked with us throughout the year. Yep. Yeah, I'm on there. Oh, he plays Is this it? game with, like, most points. I guess you could start this game thing. <laughs> Craig, explain what you talk about. I don't understand uh, it. Well, there's a game on there. I know I know. It, it's good for the uh, – for the for the world championships, I don't know if it, if it's good for the for the smaller rodeos or not. But you can, you know, as you attend things, you you get points, and and as you even view things or you post things, because there's like a community on here. It's like its own. It's like Facebook just for WRCA, mm-hmm. and so you, when you post things, the people who like your posts are probably at the world championships. So yeah, I get into this game. I I gave Lehman a ton of grief about it last year because I was beating him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you you, I, you were and you did, and you probably still are. I still, I actually am ranked number one. <laughs> so I appreciate. Well, if it makes you feel better, you're beating me too. <laughs> I don't think you play in the game at all. I <laughs> uh, no, not because I don't believe in it. Oh, I am a believer. At night, I have this whole Star Trek thing in my garage with all these computer screens, and I've got a whole handle out there and. 
She just plays like she doesn't know anything. No, <laughs> I just it, yeah. put yeah an old blank TV, <laughs> slap on my old headset, and pretend I'm blowing up stuff. <laughs> and I even make sound effects. <laughs> 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 And then I go to my therapist the next mental, morning. Yeah, you get Those this sounds are all in your head. Crazy. <laughs> it didn't happen. Uh, Bison, you need coffee, baby. It makes you do all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Oh, uh, Craig, w- thanks, buddy. You bet, man. WRCA.org. Uh, keep up with everything on there and uh, go check it out and, and call Casey. She'll she'll at least keep you entertained if you got lunch oh my break gosh. to get through. <laughs> Please, so I don't have to ask keep listening about, to these ask guys. Her about her Star Trek garage <laughs> <laughs> and my dope buckets. <laughs>